Welcome to the Business Acumen Show. I'm your host, Roy Browning. Today, we're joined by nationally syndicated radio host, Gary Sullivan. Gary, welcome to the show. Thank you, Roy. Glad to, uh, to join you and looking forward to talking to you. Before we get started, I just wanted to ask you a real quick question about how did you get started in radio? And I know you were on TV too. And if right. you could just tell a little bit about that. Well, as long as we got about an hour and 20 minutes, Roy, that'd be good. No, <laughs> it's, it's kind of like the American dream story. Quite honestly, I had no intention of ever, ever being on a radio show, certainly not a national radio show. I actually worked in a hardware store and um, was a assistant manager and then a store manager. And uh, then was taken under the wing of my mentor. And I ended up buying those hardware store chains. But to get to the radio thing, there's a radio station at that time was 1530 WCKY out of Cincinnati. They were looking for a one hour home improvement show. And um, they just sent out letters to contractors and some hardware stores. And my mentor came up to me and said, hey, you could do this, Gary. And I went, no way. No way. I got three kids under six years of age. I'm working 55 hours a week. I'm not going to do a radio show. My wife will kill me. And I uh, came by the next week and asked if I called, and I told him no. And he said, you need to call. You could do that. And I said, hey, I'm, I'm not going to do that. And the third week he came by, and he sat down, and he says, I'll just sit here till you call. <laughs> and so I called and went down and auditioned and was offered uh, a one-hour home improvement show, which in three months became a two-hour home improvement show, and six months was a three-hour home improvement. And I was on my way to dual careers. Wow, that's yeah. crazy. It just kind of happens sometimes, Roy. <laughs> yeah. And then you move forward into your radio career, and now you have a whole personal brand around you. Yeah. Now that yeah, it's, um, it's been quite a ride. So I've been doing a radio show for 32 years, and I've been doing the uh, national show. Started out as a regional show. In fact, our first affiliate was WTAM out of Cleveland. And that was about 1995, 96, right in that area. And uh, things kept growing and growing. Eventually, I sold the stores and focused entirely on the media and went national in 2001. And you're right. It's all about branding. Wow. That's a crazy story. And I, I know I'm really interested about that personal brand piece. And how do you determine what does your personal brand look like? Is it all about who you are or is it about who the advertisers say you are? It's all about who I am. In fact, we crossed that bridge within a month and a half of me starting my radio career. The general manager pulled me in after 13 weeks and says, you need to be um, more technical and you need to be uh, not joking around and having fun with the callers. And I said, listen, <laughs> that's who I am. Um, I visualize this show as being the neighbor, talking to my neighbor across the fence. I'm not a licensed plumber or electrician or contractor we're in a hardware store and that's the way I think the show should be run. And the show has run for 32 years. So I'd like to think I was right. <laughs> yeah, that's fantastic. Uh, you know, when it comes to your personal brand, what kind of things stood out to you as important? Well, the one thing that always stands out to me throughout my whole life, not just in a radio career is you gotta, you gotta have integrity you got to be believable. You got to be trustworthy. You, you just can't, you know, you just can't tell stories. You got, you got to be who you are. You got to be true. And um, I knew if I would be that way and people had, su had success with my suggestions, whether it's on products or whether it's on technique, um, that it would be a successful show. So I know it's not very complicated and I don't know what the books tell you you should be, but I'm telling you, if you're, if you're a true friend and a true neighbor and a trustworthy person with integrity, I don't think you can be stopped. You just, you know, we all make mistakes. A guy told me a long time ago, we all make mistakes. The, what separates the A plus person from the D person is how you handle your mistakes. And, uh, you know, you just, we all make mistakes. I've, I've made plenty and uh, you yeah, own them and move forward. So I, I'm all about integrity. And I think one of the things that filters back to me from maybe about potential new sponsor, uh, you know, they start checking you out. And I've had many new sponsors say to me, 
well, everybody tells me that you're an upfront guy, that you'll do what you say. And that's the biggest compliment I can get. That's awesome. So when people come to you with advertising opportunities, how do you determine if they're a good brand fit for you? Well, that's, um, <laughs> that's a great question because that builds into that whole integrity thing. So the first thing is I use the product if I don't know of the product. Having been in the hardware business for 25 years, I know a lot of products. I knew who the good products are. I knew who, where the junk is. But it doesn't matter. There's a lot of products I'm exposed to now that I had no idea what they were. So I just tell the people, I would have to use your product. And um, I use it. And sometimes it takes six months. Sometimes it takes a year before I say, okay. And in some cases, it takes a year for the client to say, I'm, I'm okay with Gary. But uh, one product we talk about, um, in fact, it's made in, or it's originated in Strongsville, Ohio, uh, called the Gutter Brush, Keep Leaves Out of Gutters, a small entrepreneurial company. This fella chased me for four years, and he always ran into me at the Nari Show and the home, big home show in Cleveland. He always had his, you know, gutter brush, and he goes, you got to talk about this thing. And I'm going like, I don't know. We'd, we'd talk about it, and I'd quiz him, and finally he said, let me send you 12 feet of it and just try it. Well, it worked pretty good. But it, it took us four years before I said, yeah, okay, that's cool. I'll talk about it. So, you know. Wow. That's really cool. And it's great that you stick with your, not just your personal brand, but who you are. That's really. Yes. Uh, well, you know, here's another thing, Roy, too. There's a lot of clients that I have and big clients, too. Clopay Garage Doors, Quick Creek. Not only is my reputation on the line when I speak on behalf of a company, but all the other advertisers' reputation are on the line. Because if I start talking about some company that is less than ideal, then what happens? Then my trustworthiness, my integrity becomes a little bit tarnished. If it happens multiple times, it becomes a lot tarnished. So I'm very particular, you know, who I take on as a client for sure. Biggest compliment on the show is when a person said, and, and they said it yesterday on the show, Gary, I call you and you have helped me so many times. I've used this, 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 and they're, they're marching down the products I talk about and they always work. And, and that's a great, great compliment. Oh, that's awesome. Now, I think I know the answer to this question because through all of your shows, you're very authentic, but was it something that you had to learn? to have that integrity and to have that rapport or has it always been who you are? Well, somebody taught me, I guess a long, long time ago, huh? <laughs> uh, yeah, I did. I, I didn't go to school for it. If that's what you mean. Um, no, I was raised to have that. And uh, not only my parents enforced it quite honestly, the school I went to enforced it. Uh, my mentor who I was telling you about, I mean, I was uh, a kid that was a, uh, low middle class, I didn't have any money to buy a hardware store chain. And uh, this fella uh, literally uh, adopted me as a son. And um, this particular person was a true pro um, and a stickler for excellence. In fact, my, my, my career in hardware eventually blossomed into store design. And um, I started designing hardware stores. And if there was a light switch screw that wasn't totally vertical, or horizontal, and they were like at 10 o'clock and 4 o'clock, he would look and tell me that screw's wrong. And I'm going like, my God, does it matter? And he goes, everything you do matters. It's supposed to be done this way. That stuck. Um, so that was, I guess, school of hard knocks, they call it. I don't know. But uh, So it's always been important to me before I got to that point, and when I got to that point, and then when I started branding my own name into the media, it became important. Wow, that's awesome. I wish that everybody had that experience. <laughs> now, you've had a very robust radio experience, and you've also had some TV experience. And my question, of all the places that you've been, what is the career highlight so far? Wow. <laughs> I guess probably the career highlight. I, I'm not much for awards and pats on the back, but I guess if you're looking for a highlight, um, a few years ago, I was named as one of the top 250 talk show hosts in America. Um, so I guess that would be a highlight. 
you know, one of the interesting things when you look at the radio medium, um, home improvement guys aren't exactly going to rise to the top of the, <laughs> the top of the cup. Okay. It's going to be a sportscaster. It's going to be a, 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 a DJ. It's going to be a political talk person. Um, home improvement, it's pretty niche. And so we might not quite get the uh, accolades uh, we think we should. But I guess that, that was a highlight. I mean, gosh, I never thought I'd be doing it. I, I kind of look at every time I'm on the air as kind of a highlight <laughs> because it's like, wow, you did okay. <laughs> and I really enjoy it. I mean, I enjoy helping people. And you know, right now you can Google and you can figure out how to stop a faucet from leaking. But there's a whole bunch of questions about your house that you don't even know what the question to ask Google is. And that's kind of where yeah. the show comes into play. And sometimes people know what they need to do and they just need a little pushing. So I don't know. Those are all highlights. It's just it's a lot of singles, Roy. Not many home runs, but a lot of singles. <laughs> uh, I love your humbleness. And I love that with all the places that you've been, just you still enjoy being on the radio as, as the perk. That's so cool. Yeah, exactly. So in your career, you've met some pretty cool people. Uh, anybody yeah. that stands out? Um, uh, well, Howie Mandel, I interviewed him at the, in Las Vegas at the International Builder Show. And, um, he was, he was very cool. He was very funny. And, uh, we were in a booth, um, I think it was American Standard because he's a germaphobe. So I know who Howie Mandel is, but I don't know a lot about Howie Mandel. So my producer's just grilling me. Now you can't shake hands with him and you can't do this. And you can't do this. And I said, oh, God, this guy's neurotic. Does, does he know he's neurotic? And she goes, yeah, yeah. And then his handler was there. And I said, so can I, can I joke about it? Do I just ignore it? You know, he's, oh, man, you just have at it. And I'm telling you what, that interview was probably one of the more fun interviews because uh, he was a pretty, uh, pretty straight shooting guy, too. <laughs> you know, I mean, we had a lot of fun. <laughs> we had a lot of fun. But, uh, yeah, over the years, there's been a lot of really great people. Um, you know, a lot of HGTV people as they were coming to town um, that, uh, you know, I get to meet and interview them. So that's always fun. Um, Ty Pennington, I introduced him at a book show one time and got to sit up this before he had uh, the home makeover. Uh, he was on TLC as the hunky carpenter. My 16 year old daughter had to tell me all about him. I didn't know who he was. And uh, <laughs> we're, we're up there and, uh, in the room just uh chatting for 45 minutes before i introduced him for his book signing and oh my god he's he's like a rock star and he was telling me he's got this big deal coming up but he couldn't tell me what it was and he's he's kind of all over the place and came home told my wife i said man if he hits it big i can too <laughs> <laughs> I, he kind of hit it big <laughs> but a great That's guy had a lot of fun with him too most of the people are just fun people and we all learn from each other you know yeah that's so cool what kind of tips would you give somebody that's trying to get started either in radio tv or personal branding make yourself irreplaceable <laughs> i have a lot of producers young guys and gals that come on board um one of my uh producers from 20 years ago now is a female anchor uh, on a Fox station in Cincinnati. Others kind of just drift and never really go where they want to want to go. And I always tell them, I said, you're so worried about what your job is. Um, nobody gives you any authority in life. You need to kind of take it. And you need to kind of take uh, projects that are out of your realm of responsibility and 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 help your manager get it done. How can I help you? You know, and all of a sudden you start doing all this stuff and your manager's like, wow, I, I can't do it without Bob, man. He's getting everything done for me. So I always tell people, make yourself irreplaceable. You know, that you know, it would be a horrible day if that person left. And I think after that, things take care of themselves. Yeah. Do you find yourself having to spend a lot of time managing social medias and all those kind of outlets, or do you have some people that help you with that? I have one person that helps me about 10 hours a week. Um, you could probably have a whole staff if you wanted to. 
there's um you know so there's probably about five people like me in the country that do shows like this um most of them have a, a staff one guy has he owns a studio a tv studio and everything um but i have a person and, and i do some myself i mean this is my work now it's i'm not running a chain of 16 hardware stores anymore you know so i've got time to get that stuff done and this fella helps me he does you know some facebook stuff this year we're offering um several facebook live segments to um a lot of my clients which kind of takes me back to the roots of doing the tv <laughs> so, so it's kind of a big circle it's just a different platform to be honest i i tell people all the time things really haven't changed that much the, what's changed is the platform you know the content eh, biggest changes light bulbs water-based furnishes and security systems <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know smart houses but outside of that the basic mechanisms not so much you know and the platform to deliver it to people certainly has changed yeah now outside of the radio you've been involved with habitat for humanity for about 20 years how did that yeah. relationship begin and what does it mean to you personally well that's my passion you know i mean um i i've been blessed so you know there's an opportunity to give back actually uh the mother of one of my producers volunteered at habitat and 20 years ago they wanted to do um home maintenance courses for their new homeowners now these homeowners they don't they're not given a house okay a lot of people think they're given a house they help build their house they have a zero percent mortgage but they're raising families building their house and have a, a house they can move into probably for a monthly mortgage of under five hundred dollars so a lot of these folks never had the opportunities to work on their house in their family. Uh, they've always been in a rental situation. So it's imperative to us to help them be successful. So I start teaching this course um, and, and still teach this course two to three times a year uh, for the new potential homeowners. And then, um, geez, time flies. I think 2010, um, I was asked to join the board uh, which I joined, and at that time we were building six houses a year. Um, last year I termed off the board, and we were building 36 homes a year and doing 50 repairs a year. So we had wow. massive, massive growth. And I was the board chair for the last three years, and I was able to kind of leverage a little bit of my radio friends and partnerships to benefit Habitat. So that's been a great experience. That's been great. I'm still very involved in that off the board, but I volunteer a lot, do a lot of things for them, do a lot of oh, talks so for cool. them, stuff like that. So, yeah. yeah. I remember that's working for, for Habitat Humanity one summer in college and we just hammering all day. It was so much fun. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, actually uh, for folks that haven't, it, it's a great experience because, uh, you know, the division we have in the country now, and then you get on a build site and we have, it's the most diverse group you've ever seen. Um, creeds, races, financial, just everything's all over the place. And everybody's, the first day of the build, everybody's kind of checking everybody out. <laughs> By the third week, it's, it's, a, um, it's, a, it's a good family. And, and the, the magic at Habitat really happens on the build site. Uh, uh, you know, the house is kind of a byproduct of it, but uh, yeah, a lot of magic happens on those build sites. So that's, yeah. that's always a, a great feeling and a, it's a good thing to take some of my time up. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you for doing that. People like you that are giving back of their time and their energy and their resources is so yeah. valuable to so many people. Yeah. yeah. It's like everything else too. You walk away, learn a lot more than uh, you would ever believe. You know, you, th you think you had everything figured out. Eh, you didn't have everything figured out. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for taking time to talk with me today. Uh, before we go, I know you mentioned that you have a new podcast. You're doing some Facebook Live videos. Mm -hmm. So where do we find where? You? Yeah, so where to find yeah. me? Um, uh, all over the place. So uh, on the podcast, you can download the iHeart app, which is free. And all you do is just search Gary at home with Gary Sullivan. And um, 
on uh, Google Play and iTunes. Same thing at home with Gary Sullivan. All free. Um, you can also listen to the national show, which is on 270 radio stations now. And our flagship station is 55 KRC out of Cincinnati. And you can listen live um, at the iHeart app. All you do is search 55 KRC. Our website's GarySullivanOnline.com. That's got the podcast. That's got the listen live. Facebook page. I bet you wouldn't guess this, but it's Gary Sullivan at home. That's the Facebook page you're looking for, Gary Sullivan Public Figure. And, and we even break down some of the projects of the week that we do, and we Facebook those individually. So we kind of put them right in your lap there, too. So, so those are, I guess, some of the ways, probably all the ways. I don't know. There's, there's a lot of stuff out there, but that's the basics. <laughs> Very cool. Well, thank you so much for taking your time out of your day to talk with me, and I hope you have a fantastic rest of the day. I certainly will. Thanks for having me, Roy. I appreciate it. All right. Thanks. To learn more, follow us online at summitup.biz. If you found value in this podcast, please leave us a review. See you next time.